questions that I'm most frequently asked about gun ownership include, what gun should I buy as a personal carry gun? I'm getting a concealed carry permit and I need a pistol. Another question is what the best home defense gun is. The first thing that I would think about would be the primary way that you plan to use this gun. If you are going to be carrying it on your person as a concealed gun, then there are some considerations that otherwise uh, we don't care about so much. Namely, the size and the weight. So if we're going to use a gun for anything, I think the first thing we need to think about is uh, are we going to be able to hit what it is that we're shooting at and not miss and hit something behind that target, uh, perhaps a person that we don't want to hurt or a building or something like that. So we want to be able to hit our target, even if there's an emergency that we have to save our lives uh, by shooting someone, we still want to be able to hit them and not miss shots. The most common, and I would even say up 95%, of the reason that most people miss their shots uh, has to do with anticipation of the gun kicking. So they either heal the gun or they anticipate and push low left. Uh, that's the most common one. The heavier that a gun is, the less likely that you're going to push it down or up as you shoot or just the moment before the trigger breaks. That means that generally speaking, a lighter gun you're going to be less accurate with, and a heavier gun you're going to be more accurate with. Now, if you practice a lot, then you can overcome the, the lightweight issues. And if you're shooting two, three, four hundred shots a week, and you do that consistently for some months on end, you're going to be pretty good even with a lightweight gun. Most of us don't shoot that much, though. So that is the first big consideration. Now, when it comes to actually carrying on your person, are you going to do that? Are you going to add an extra several pounds or even a pound attached to your body that's cold? Uh, if it's made of metal or even plastic, it gets cold in the winter, rubs against your skin, it has a bulge, uh, is just kind of digs into your body. Are you really going to do that? If you do, I applaud you. It's wonderful. Please, please do carry concealed. Maybe you'll be able to protect yourself or someone else someday. It's a great thing. The truth is... The vast majority of people with concealed carry permits do not carry a gun concealed on their person even 50% of the time, much less 100% of the time. Most people don't do it at all. That gun is kept on the bed stand or under the pillow or in the center console of the vehicle or in a backpack or a purse or something like that. So if we're going to keep the gun in a place that isn't rubbing against us, we're not jogging with it bouncing against our body, then that kind of gets rid of the need for it to be small or lightweight. That means we can have a bigger, heavier gun that we're going to shoot better with. So this is the, the most important uh, thing to consider, in my opinion. Now, most gun sales folks are going to suggest that for the inexperienced shooter, especially a woman, that they're going to uh, be best off getting a light-framed, little tiny 38 caliber revolver, because it's easy for them to figure it out, is what's frequently said. That is a bit demeaning, but that's uh, you know, somewhat true for both men and women. If you aren't going to go out and shoot at least monthly, uh, but if you're going to wait a few years between your shots, it is harder to work a semi-automatic gun and cl clear malfunctions and reload and, and do all those things. It, it is a bit more complicated. It's not very complicated, but a little bit more than a revolver. So that is a factor. Personally, I like... I like pistols. I like semi-automatics. That's, uh, that's my favorite. So if we've kind of decided we're going to lean toward a heavier metal gun, so not a Glock or a little plastic Ruger or any of the other brands. All the brands have the little lightweight plasticky polymer guns. If we've decided we want a heavier gun that is made of metal and is a little bit bigger, easier to hold in our hand, then we have to ask uh, about caliber. What caliber do we want? 22 caliber, 9 millimeter, 380, 25, 45 ACP. Most people in the self-defense industry, trainers, will agree that the best size is the largest that you can comfortably shoot well. So what we mean by this is if you have big, strong hands and you enjoy the reco recoil of a gun and you can shoot a 45 uh, ACP, really well, even under stress, then that's a perfect size for you. If you can only shoot a 9mm, then that's a great size for you. If you can only shoot a 22 caliber, now this is where we really start to separate 
separate our paths. Many trainers will say a 22 is just too small for personal protection. I agree that a 22 is not as good as a 9mm, which is not as good as a 45 ACP, which is not as good as a 500 Smith & Wesson Magnum, which is not as good as a 20mm howitzer. However, the 22 caliber long rifle handgun is better than a wet Q-tip. And a wet Q-tip is better than a sticky note. So as we look at all this, uh, all the different options for personal protection, yeah, a knife is better than that wet Q-tip. So maybe a knife would fit somewhere between the 22 caliber and the wet Q-tip. There, there, it's a scale. It's not a yes or no thing. If you are comfortable shooting a 22 caliber, but when you've tried shooting a 9mm or a 38 Special, it scares you. And you just don't want to touch the gun. You're not going to go out and practice with it because it's not fun. It hurts your hand and it jolts and, and you just hate it. Well, then that, that gun's too big. You should probably go back down to a 22 caliber. Maybe in time you'll work your way up to a larger caliber. But for now, maybe that 22 is better. No, it's not going to do as good of a job at stopping a 300-pound leather jacket-wearing drunk guy as a 45 caliber ACP. However... If you're comfortable shooting it and you're actually going to be able to hit the guy a couple times, unlike the 45 ACP that you're afraid to pick up, well, 22 caliber is better for now. And now we'll get into a really sticky topic. What about brands? What is the best brand of gun? You know, as long as it's not a high point, it's probably okay. There are some cheapo guns that have been made. High Point is just one of them. That they are these little Saturday night specials that are not the greatest guns. Uh, however, as long as you're spending at least $400 on a used gun or $500 on a new gun, you're probably going to get a pretty good gun. So I'm not really going to get into all the different brands. And, and you know everybody has a preference. Ford, Chevy, Mercedes. Yeah, some are better than others, but they're all pretty good. Most important thing is to narrow down the size, the weight, the caliber, and then go to gun stores, feel different guns, see what feels right in your hand. For me, I don't like plastic Glocks. They just, Glocks are not good for my hand. I don't shoot well with them. I'm not a good enough shooter to shoot well with a Glock. Some people absolutely love them and shoot way better than I can. So it's not Glocks fault. It just doesn't work for my hand. For me, 1911 models in many different brands are what feels best. I shoot best with an STI 9mm 1911. For me, that's what's best. For you, it's probably something else. So feel a bunch of different guns. If you get a chance to shoot them, you know, come out on a shooting experience with us or, or just hire us for a couple hours of private pistol and let's try a lot of different guns. And of course, we have, you know, I don't know, a dozen, dozen and a half guns. We don't have all many hundreds of guns that exist, but enough to give you a good idea. Uh, so we'd welcome you to do that. And finally, let's address the other question. What is the best gun for home defense? If you're not going to practice shooting much, then I would suggest that probably the best gun for home defense would be a pump-action 12-gauge shotgun. Or if that's too much kick, a 20-gauge pump-action shotgun. The sound of the pumping is a universally known sound. That will probably discourage someone from coming to attack you. And if it doesn't, you're probably not going to be as likely to miss with a shotgun with many little BBs coming out of it as you would be with a pistol. So that is definitely worth considering. And uh, you can check the web page. We have a firearms consultation service. So if you do want more advice, I'm happy to get more detailed and, and help you find one that's perfect for your unique situation. Just let us know and we'll get something scheduled and uh, make sure you get the perfect gun. Please do write back with questions, comments, and uh, we'll hone in on the perfect gun for you.